The reign of Mary I was a very dangerous time for Protestants across England, and the realm in which she reigned over. She is known as Bloody Mary for the series of burnings of Protestants at the stake that occurred during her time as Queen, and John Fox's Book of Martyrs documents these. From this book we hear tales of bloodshed and terror which gripped the nation. Mary herself changed the religion of England back to Catholicism from Protestantism following the death of Edward VI, and required all in her country to support her changes with regards to the church. Those who didn't change suffered the ultimate punishment, a brutal death being burned at the stake as a heretic. There was no separation between the classes with regards to the punishment either, with some of England's most noble such as Bishops Ridley and Latimer, and later Thomas Cranmer, being burned to death. Today we look at the tragic story of three women, who although not living in England, were brutally executed under the reign of Mary I in horrific fashion. So join us today as we look at the Guernsey Martyrs, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Guillermine Gilbert and Peritine Massey were sisters who lived in the same house as their mother, Catherine Chaucer's in Guernsey. Guernsey is a Channel Island found in the English Channel, not too far from the French coast. In 1483, a papal bull granted the privilege of neutrality to the Channel Islands, their harbours and sea, and were considered to be neutral territory. In 1548, a royal charter confirmed this, and the French later did try to invade nearby Jersey in 1549, but were defeated by the locals. Now during the mid-16th century, the island of Guernsey was influenced by Calvinist reformers who came and travelled across from Normandy. Here the islanders would hear of Calvinist teachings and the Protestant beliefs, and from this, many people on the island were turning from Catholicism to Protestantism. Peritine Massey was married to a Calvinist minister, who left the island to live in London for a short period in order to avoid any prosecution for heresy on the island by spreading the Calvinist teachings. This may have been during the reign of Edward VI, but in 1556, Peritine and her sister Guillermine, along with her mother, were arrested and charged with receiving a stolen goblet. The three family members were brought to trial, and in front of the judge, it was decided that the main witness to the crime, a man named Vincent Gosset, had lied about the whole affair and the goblet. For this, the women were found not guilty, and as punishment for lying, Gosset had his ear nailed to the pillory, a stock which would be in public, and which someone would be strapped in by their heads. However, during the trial and the questioning, it was found that the three defendants and women had not been attending the weekly church services that they were required to do. It also emerged that their religious beliefs were different than those which were allowed by the church authorities. The court report said, Master Dean and Justices in your court and jurisdiction, after all amiable recommendations, please if you know that we are informed by the depositions of certain honest men, passed before us in a manner of an inquiry, in the which inquiry Catherine Chaucer's and her two daughters have submitted themselves in a certain matter criminal, wherein we be informed that they have been disobedient to the commandments and ordinances of the church, in contemning and forsaking the mass and ordinances of the same, against the will and commandment of our sovereign lord, the king and the queen. With this, the three women were all accused of heresy, and were accused of refusing to attend Catholic Mass, which was compulsory in the kingdoms which Mary I ruled over, and also they were accused of offending the commandments and the word of God. All three women were charged with heresy, an incredibly serious crime across Europe, and which carried grave consequences. The three women were then on the 1st of July 1556, taken to Castle Cornet. Castle Cornet in Guernsey was an important part of the island's defences, and stands on a formal tidal island of Little Roussel. Throughout history it did see much action against the French, and during the Tudor period it was remodelled due to the development of gunpowder and cannons. This was where the mother and two daughters were held, charged with religious crimes. They would be held here for three days before being executed. On the 4th of July, Peritine Massey, Guillermine Gilbert and Catherine Chaucer's were all brought to court and tried for heresy. At this trial, the women argued that they had in fact been acting according to religious policies, but instead of Mary I's Catholic religious followings, 
they are in fact following the policies of the Protestant former King of England, Edward VI. Edward made large-scale changes to the Church of England, making it more Protestant following his father Henry VIII's break from Rome. He made England more Protestant, and when Mary I succeeded him, she changed all of the policies Edward had brought in, with the most important seeing England returning to Catholicism. The fact that the women had not returned to Catholic beliefs and teachings was incredibly serious. At the trial, the women's neighbours testified that they had been unwilling and defiantly refused to follow the religious ceremonies ordered by Mary I, and for this, all three women were found guilty of heresy and were condemned to death and were sentenced to be burned at the stake. This was the standard sentence for the extremely serious crime of heresy. But there was one issue. Peritine Massey was pregnant. In pagan times, this would have prevented her from being executed. However, barbarically, Catholics in the reign of Mary I saw it acceptable to kill her, along with her newborn child. Helie Gosselin was the man placed in charge of the executions of the three women, and they took place on the 18th of July, 1556. All of them were to be burned on the same fire. John Fox would go on to record their deaths. He stated, The time then being come, when those three good servants and holy saints of God, the innocent mother with her two daughters should suffer, in the place where they should consume their martyrdom, three stakes were set up. At the middle post was the mother, the eldest daughter on the right hand, the youngest on the other. So the three family members and women had been brought to their place of execution, tied to three stakes together, and were to be executed in one fire. Fox goes on to write, They were first strangled, but the rope broke before they were dead, and so the poor women fell in the fire. Peritine, who was then great with child, did fall on her side, where happened a rueful sight, not only to the eyes of all that there stood, but also to the ears of all true-hearted Christians that shall read this history. For as the belly of the woman burst asunder by a vehemence of the flame. So the three women were brutally burned, but were meant to be strangled before death, but because the rope broke, they were burned alive. Although we have to take Fox's account with a pinch of salt, as it is Protestant propaganda, the horror continued. Allegedly, one of the witnesses to the execution William House then took the baby from the fire and laid it upon the grass, and the executioner Hellier Goslin then ordered it should be thrown back onto the fire. Fox wrote, and so the infant baptised in his own blood to fill up the number of God's innocent saints was both born and died a martyr, leaving behind to the world which it never saw, a spectacle wherein the whole world may see the cruelty of Catholic tormentors. Following the harrowing execution of the Guernsey martyrs, there was outrage at the fate of the pregnant woman and her child. In fact, the executioner was considered to be guilty of murder, with the fact that the baby had not been condemned as a heretic. The story of the Guernsey martyrs is a brutal one, in which one of the most harrowing events of the reign of Bloody Mary was played out in horrific fashion. It is definitely a story that should not be forgotten, for their only crime was them refusing to attend a Catholic church service. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.